If you remember when we learned about the moment of a force back in statics course, we learned that the moment is the rotational effect caused by the force about a reference point, or rather, an axis that passes through this reference point. In scalar form, the moment is calculated by the magnitude of the force multiplied by the moment arm, which is the perpendicular distance from this reference point to the line of action of the force. In vector form, the moment is calculated by the cross product of a position vector and the force vector. The position vector must start from this reference point, but it can end anywhere along the line of action of the force. So now we're going to introduce angular momentum in a very similar way. So on this slide, instead of having the force vector, now we have the linear momentum vector, which is mass multiplied by the velocity vector. And instead of having the moment caused by the force, now we have angular momentum, which is the moment caused by linear momentum. And how do we calculate it? The angular momentum h calculated using the scalar form equals to the magnitude of linear momentum m times v times the moment arm d. d again is the perpendicular distance from the re reference point O to the line of action of the linear momentum, which is the velocity vector. Again, in vector formulation, the angular momentum is calculated by the cross product of position vector r and the linear momentum vector. R, again, starts from the reference point O, and it can end anywhere along the velocity vector. So similar to the principle of linear impulse and momentum, now we can write the principle of angular impulse and momentum. This integration term here is the angular impulse, which is the total moment about point O integrated through the process from the initial time t1 to the final time t2. As you can see, for the principle of angular impulse and momentum, you must choose only one reference point, point o. You have to be consistent when calculating the angular momentum as well as the angular impulse. Let me make another analogy to statics. If you recall, from statics, we learned that the conditions for rigid body equilibrium includes two vector equations. The resultant force as a vector is zero, and the resultant moment calculated about any arbitrary point is also zero. For a 3D problem, these two vector equations can be rewritten into six independent scalar equations. And for a 2D problem, these two vector equations can be rewritten into three independent scalar equations. So very similarly, for particle kinetics, we have two vector equations of principles of impulse and momentum. One is for linear impulse and momentum. The second one is for angular impulse and momentum. And for a 3D problem, these two become six independent scalar equations. And for a 2D problem, these two vector equations become three independent scalar equations. The first and the second are principles of linear impulse and momentum applied to the x and y direction, respectively. The third equation is the principle of angular impulse and momentum about an arbitrary point O within the xy plane. From the principle of angular impulse and momentum, if there is no net angular impulse, this term is eliminated. Again, we get the conservation of angular momentum, which means that the initial angular momentum of the particle equals to its final angular momentum calculated about the same reference point O. The conservation of angular momentum can also be applied to a system of particles if there is no or negligible net external angular impulse. Once again, make sure that the angular momentum is calculated about the same reference point before and after the process. Let's look at this example. There's a ball that is connected to the string, and it is moving within the horizontal plane. Initially, it was given a velocity of 10 meter per second, which was perpendicular to the string. And there's a force inside the stream that is pulling the stream shorter, 
and the length of the stream is given as a function of time. And we need to determine at time equals to five seconds what is the speed of this ball. And we also need to determine what is the total work done by this force during this process. Since this particle is only moving within the horizontal plane, therefore we do not need to consider the weight force as well as the support force. Therefore, when we draw the free body diagram of this ball within the horizontal plane, the force within the stream pulling this ball is the only force we need to consider. And since the line of action of this force always passes through point O, Therefore, if we summarize the moment caused by the external forces about point O, then the resultant moment is always zero, again, within the horizontal plane. And since the resultant moment is always zero about point O, then the integration term, which is the angular impulse about point O, is also always zero. Therefore, we can apply the conservation of angular momentum that for this ball, its angular momentum about point O at the time T1 equals to its angular momentum about point O at the time T2. So we can set up a polar coordinate system, and at any given time, the velocity of the ball has a radial velocity component Vr and a transverse component V theta. And notice that at any given time, the radial velocity will always have a line of action that passes through point O as well. Therefore, Vr will not create any angular momentum about point O. Only V theta will create angular momentum about point O. Therefore, in the conservation of angular momentum equation about point O, we have R1 mv1 equals to R2 mv theta2. And as you can tell, the mass can be canceled out from this equation. And R1 and R2 are both angular momentum moment arms, but they are also the length of the stream and can be determined from this uh, function. And at initial time, R1 is 20 meter at time equals to 5 seconds, R2 is 10 meter. And the initial velocity was given and the initial velocity was a transverse velocity. And from this, we can calculate v theta 2 to be 20 meter per second. That's only the transverse component of the final velocity of the ball. But the radial velocity equals to dr dt. And since the function of r is given, therefore dr dt equals to negative 2 meter per second, which is a constant negative sign indicates that the velocity along the radial direction points towards point O. And from here, we can calculate the magnitude of the velocity at a time equals to 5 seconds to be 20.1 meter per second. And that answers the first part of this question. Since motion only happens within the horizontal plane, therefore, this force F is the only force doing work to this particle during this process. And therefore, the total work done by F can be determined by applying the principle of work and energy to this particle. We substitute in the mass of this particle and its initial and final speeds, and we can solve the total work done by F is 304 joule.